Good uh, morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm just going to introduce myself and um, our hosts for today. Um, my name is Christopher. I'm the program administrator for the graduate program. Um, we have Jennifer Scott, who is the program administrator, and she is the main person who will be discussing and talking about our program. And then we have our wonderful graduate assistant, Shane Yano, and he is going to give you more information on the program, his experiences, and he's the one who can tell you all the, the goods and the bads. So um, he is a wealth of knowledge and information. So again, thank you for joining us. I am going to ask Jennifer to unmute herself and she will um, give us a wonderful, wonderful opening and continue from there. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I'm so excited to see you. Welcome to Graduate Theological Studies. And as Christopher uh, kindly mentioned, I'm Jennifer Scott and I manage the graduate program. And uh, Christopher, I want to introduce Christopher. He is our assistant to the Graduate Theological Studies program. He comes to us with an MA in education and he has experience teaching at the elementary Catholic school system. Um, also with me is uh, Shane Yano, our esteemed graduate assistant who wears many hats in the department as a researcher, tutor, uh, website manager, um, my gosh, some uh, indexer, uh, everything. So, and he's also our graduate student. So as far as the program goes, um, basically I manage all the scholarships, um, the recruiting, uh, the research assistants, uh, basically the ebb and flow of the program. And typically with Zoom, we always do have a few issues with the internet. So we do Just apologize you know. for that. <laughs> so uh, um, the, my con the internet connection is a little dicey right now. So uh, just to let you know, our MA is so well admired that he can teach with just an MA uh, at, the, at the college level. And then of course, uh, they, they asked me to come back to LMU and to take on this career, this position in education. And so that's how uh, my path kind of went in a nutshell. So I want to um, just give you a couple of points about the program. And then I wanna hear from you, your interests, your questions, um, where you think you are in the discernment process, uh, timing, all of this matters to graduate school and to, um, to uh, your path, and and this is uh, this is a good time to come into the program because we have a very good scholarship, and so I'll mention that as well later on. So we have two programs. I know you've seen all of this on the website, but I just want to go through briefly just uh, the basics about the Graduate Theological Studies program. And if you have any questions when, when I'm done, please. Um, as, as you are introducing yourself, uh, please just in, interrupt me. So we have an MA in theology and an MA in pastoral theology. So some, some applicants call me, it's a wonderful gentleman, um, South Broker called me yesterday, he said, I don't know which one to go in. <laughs> and so I said, well, the MA in pastoral theology has a focus in pastoral religious education, pastoral ministry, uh, however, the core courses in both programs, the MA in Pastoral Theology and the MA in Theology are pretty much similar, except for the capstone project, which is the, the projects that you do at the end of the program. So for instance, um, we have our New Testament course as a requirement, our systematics course, our patristics historical theology course, uh, spirituality courses, and then um, the focus of your capstone project takes place 
And in between all of that, you will take any electives that you feel like enrolling in. So for example, some people will inquire about the program and they want an MA in theology with a focus on scripture. So they will take the core courses and the elective courses will be comprised of scripture courses such as Jesus and film, Paul Nane epistles, uh, Johannine spirituality, okay? Other folks will come into the program and say, I just want a general theological studies degree and this is the degree I want, and I possibly want to move on to a PhD. So I'm just going to take general courses and explore my way, because an MA program, the nature of an MA program, is a general education of the field. So for example, that person would, of course, take the core courses, and then also take courses in Islam, spirituality, mysticism, Patristics, Augustine, throw a little philosophy in there, uh, some spirituality, uh, so, uh, you know, more scripture, you know, so it, it's just a group. And then if they're called to, to teach at a high school, wow, they can teach anything. You can teach world religions, you can teach um, uh, Catholic thought and theory, you can teach spirituality, uh, you can teach uh, systematic theology, you can teach ethics. You can even take bioethics as a focus in the program. So, so the MA, if you have a general MA, if, you're, if your goal is to teach, for example, at the high school level, then you will have many courses under your belt to draw information for the courses you'll be assigned at that high school to teach. So that's very important. Because uh, when I taught from high school, they were like, what can you teach? And I said, well, I have a little bit of comparative theology. So I had to hustle when I taught in the high, this was before the college level. I had to hustle and just review some things because it wasn't my strong point. I was studying Greek, Latin, and the classics, but that, I was lacking that, see? But I still had the methodologies under my belt, the tools to know how to research, to know how to connect with what professor and already equipped me to teach you know, uh, comparative theology. And then they say, oh no, Scott, we moved you somewhere else. Okay, great. <laughs> so it was all for nothing. But I'm just saying that if you take courses and they're general courses, at the end of the day, you can teach anything. Also folks will receive a more general degree in the program. And then when they graduate or before they graduate, they tell us, hey, I wanna go on for the PhD track. I'm applying to Loyola Chicago, Boston College, Emory, Fordham, you name it, Columbia, I'm going. Okay, great. And then when they get to their PhD school, then they narrow their focus down. Ah, oh, I just wanna study mysticism. I just wanna study bioethics. I just wanna study pastoral ministry theology. I just wanna study the patristics or I want a more interdisciplinary leadership PhD, okay? So, and then uh, even though you've taken courses that you might not focus on in your PhD, you will still have to reference to what you learned in comparative theology or spirituality, um, systematic theology, if you're just focusing on scripture. So, um, so basically what's, what's great about both programs is that you can focus on one area, like for example, pastoral theology, pastoral leadership, spiritual direction. And, and, and then, or I mean, or you can focus on theology and then focus and just take elective courses. And then you can build the program however you wish. So even if you're in the theology track, your electives could be comprised of pastoral theology. And if you're in the pastoral theology track, your electives could be comprised of just generic, you know, theological courses, uh, feminist theology, uh, spirituality, anything you wish. So you can basically build the program to the way you want it. Now, once you're in the program and you say, Jennifer, my area is not uh, being taught this semester. I really want to focus on Thomas Aquinas but I don't see it on your listings. Can you help me? Yes, we can. What we would do is that we would assign you to the professor 
who is an expert in that area. And then you and he, or you and she, can have an independent, what's called an independent study, one-on-one -on -one with that faculty member. So even though a course may not be offered, we still have the expertise in the department and we can still arrange a course for you. So it's, it, it's, it's an amazing program. The last thing about the two programs is that one is not above the other. So for example, uh, in some schools, a pastoral ministry school is over here and a theology school is over there. In our, in our program, they're viewed equally. You're in class with people from both programs. So for example, your pro seminar course, which is your introductory course, which teaches you how to read, write and research theological terminologies and learn methodology and theological studies. In that course, you, you have, you have uh, classmates from both programs. The same with your New Testament course, the same with all of your courses, you're gonna have folks from both programs. So there isn't a hierarchy with that. So um, people appreciate that. And at the end of the day, if you're looking to be hired at the high school or the college level, you're gonna look at the degree from LMU, that's the graduate theological studies. And if your focus is pastoral theology, that's fine. Or theology, that's fine. They're still gonna hire you, okay? They're not gonna think that uh, the pastoral theology is, is weaker and the MA is stronger, okay? So it's, it's just, it doesn't exist because the rigor is in both programs, okay? Um, and so uh, with that, um, I would like to uh, welcome you and I would like to hear more about you, for example, why theology, um, why this path, a little bit about yourself and, um, and then this way we can learn more about you and, and hopefully answer your question, more of your questions. Uh, I'll start with uh, Kayla, Kayla. Okay. Yeah, we've met before a couple of times, but Kayla. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, so yeah, my name is Kayla um, and I'm interested in the um, MA in Theological Studies. Um, why theology? I think it's just always been like my favorite thing to explore and learn about and I've just always had questions um, ever since I was a kid. Um, and I've always wanted to just look into it myself and say, mm, I'm going to look that up for myself instead of just taking someone's word for it, I guess. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm very interested in um, Christian theology, especially um, like early Christian spirituality, Christian mysticism, I'm also interested in feminist and comparative theology. Um, so that's what I hope to study. Excellent, excellent. Welcome, Kayla. I, I'm you. so excited. Uh, you know, LMU has the best Bernard McGinn uh, student. I, she's not a student. She's Charlotte Radler. And mm. Dr. Charlotte Radler uh, was a pupil of Bernard McGinn, and he is the lead person in mysticism. And so you would definitely, uh, you will study Meister Eckhart, Marguerite Porret. Um, and so you will be studying from the best. Mm. So, uh, you know, if you completely decide to join the program, uh, you're fortunate that you are living in the same state where the best theologian of mysticism resides. So, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so welcome. And Thank you. So much. <laughs> and uh, uh, Teresa. Hi, I'm Teresa. I'm 37. I, I live in Anaheim, so I might be commuting quite a while. Um, I had a corporate job for a long time and now I'm a stay at home mom for a few years. And I'm at this point in my life where I'm like, what am I doing? Like I, I'm having like a, like a quarter life crisis, I guess, and trying to see like how I can reinvent myself and where, where life may take me. So I feel like uh, going back to my roots, going back to my core, um, theology would be a good avenue of like where to find myself. So I have some friends who teach at Catholic schools and uh, they all said that Loyola was better than the other option. So um, that's why uh, it came highly recommended. So that's why I'm here. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Well, welcome, Teresa. This is awesome. Of course, I'm going to ask who, who, who. <laughs> we have so many alums out there teaching and uh, their, their head, uh, their, their department chairs, their principals. Their... I'm too excited. I'm too excited. Well, I mean, this is a finding yourself. Um, I, I, usually I mention to folks when, when I'm in discussion that we have a, a few type of uh, a stereotypical student. We have one that's the searcher. <laughs> and that's the, I know, I know, I know, I know, it's exciting. <laughs> the searcher is the one where she or he is in the program. They're not sure what they're going to do with it. They're so open. And people are like, well, she's searching. Oh my gosh, they just take over and they take off because they're so open. So whatever they hear in class or whatever inspires them, oh my God, I'm a searcher, I'm open, I found it, click, boy, they jump on it. And then they become, oh my God, the, the amazing theologians. We have Dr. Christopher Miller. He's one of those um, and he teaches comparative theology. But he was our student and he was like, oh, I like this, I like that. Well, he was open, my God, he's a brilliant genius and he's gone on. Uh, to study further. So being a searcher is is great. It's a good place to be. It's open. It's raw. And you can move wherever you want without having to tell yourself, oh, but I thought you wanted to here. Now you're, you're going over here to bioethics. Or, or, oh, I thought you wanted pastoral theology, but I see you're flipping over to theology. You don't have to worry about those voices. You just go with the spirit. And, and that, is, that, that, that is an amazing experience. Um, and, and you already have connections, but once again, in the program, you will be in class with other teachers, other folks that are already in ministry, having positions in ministry. That's how I got my, my job. Someone just said, hey, Jennifer, this high school position is open. Hey, Jennifer, what do you think about this? I don't know. I was just sitting in the corner, some young kid. And then that's how it folds. And then I became a better person because I was able to apply, because I was up in the clouds, in mystical clouds, and I was able to apply all of my theology, my philosophy, my reflection, to practice, to ministry, to teaching, to where it's even more meaningful. And so that's how I matured and grew as a person. But I, I started as a searcher, what am I doing? I, I know I'm in education, but I guess I'm not. And then the program, formed me, not just the academics and the rigor and the faculty, but my classmates. I learned so much by being in class with my classmates, learning about their life experience in relation to the material, to the text, to the subject. And through their lens, I reflect on mine and I also go deeper and then bringing it to the world. It's like a, it's like a reflection, it comes back like a cycle. And then I just, in the program, if I may, I took one course or no, two courses in spiritual direction, which really taught me how to be a minister and a teacher. It taught me how to reflect. It taught me how to discern. And it taught me how to get, let go of detachments. And we call it the middle high German. This is for Kayla, uh, Abgescheidenheit, which is a middle high German word for detachment. And that process helped me to be a better listener, to go through my own things in life, as well as being present to someone else and teaching them through the method of spirituality, how to reflect, listen to the spirit and to discern their path. Not telling them, it's not a therapy, I'm not telling them what to do, but just presenting what the other is telling me in a way where they could hear it. And then through that reflection, they discern they reflect and then they make choices in life. It's a very powerful tool to learn no matter what field you go into, even if it's banking or if it's uh, you're being a mom, well, I'm a mom, so I know, being a mom, a, a, a wife, a minister, a friend, a colleague, a teacher, spiritual direction, at least one course will do wonders to your life and it, it's transforming. So the, the only thing about the program that's really a shocker is that the program is transforming. No one who walks into my door is the same way when they're graduating. No one, and it's so inspiring. That's why I'm sorry, I get all excited because 
this is what I witnessed. This is what I see. And it brings me to the initial Christian witness within myself. And then that is what motivates me. And then that's what's inspiring to me. And that's what fuels the community. So it, it doesn't matter what direction you are, what tradition you're coming from, what you're seeking out of yourself or the program, this transformation is gonna happen. And, and, it's, and it's graceful, and, but it will happen. And I am just so excited because as you say how you wanna make yourself over or hey, what am I gonna do? I have children, but what am I gonna do? What's my next step in life? Something that's a little more meaningful in, in, in life. And it's like, okay, aha, what is that void? That void is just the space that's calling you to do that reflective process of giving, sharing, teaching, and enjoying what that brings you. And then it'll be like a high you're living on all the time. I know, because I live on it. So, <laughs> so it's like you have a deep spiritual reflection. Boy, I, I interacted with um, Christopher Wood and Shane today when I heard from them, what I learned from them. Oh my God, what did Ronner say about Trinity as a, as a whole? What does Leonardo Boff say about Trinity as a community? How do we bring structure, hierarchy with community? And, and so you start thinking these things as well as engaging in the moment. And it's, it, it, it's, it's rich. It's like living a full life of meaning uh, that's creative, that's purposeful. And, and um, uh, it's, uh, you'll, you'll never be disappointed because it's, it's a degree that feeds yourself and the other. And, and that, that's, what's, that's what's special about, about the program. I'm sorry I went off on a tangent there, but you just hit a very sensitive, exciting nerve there. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And I, we're gonna continue to talk today. So, so I'm so excited. And please, David, David, please, please. Hello, hello, welcome. Morning. Morning. Good morning. So my name is David Garcia. Um, it's my fourth year in my undergraduate at uh, California State University of San Bernardino, 121. Um, theology. Uh, actually, this was not the plan I had when I first started college. I actually wanted to become a dentist, but then uh, I remember my orientation days. Um, I saw a Newman Club, and I was just like, oh, well, what is that? I was, just, I was just very like, oh, okay. Um, as much as I try to run away from it, I couldn't. <laughs> It just got me. So I, I, I joined the Newman Club. I was like, fine, I'll join. And um, I think from there, I'm even getting nervous. I don't know why. Um, I found like my new home, my new niche. And it's just like, I'm like I, I like this so much. I don't know why. Like serving as soon as I'm the president of the Catholic Newman Club right now. And um, I, I just like serving the students. I don't call them students. I call them my children. And a lot of people have heard that. And I was like, you know what? I think I could do something in campus ministry. And I saw there was a MA in pastoral uh, theology. And that's like the focus that I have is just serving the students. Hopefully one day here at our satellite campus because we do not have a campus minister here. And that was kind of my inspiration. Like maybe I, I can be the first one. So that is the reason why I'm like, I'm like looking around right now what, uh, you know, the program's offered. But honestly, that's like the basis of why I want to join uh, or get my master's just because I want to serve the students. And if it's not campus ministry, then you know there's other avenues as well that I'm looking at as well. But yeah, it's a pretty exciting journey <laughs> that I had. But yeah. Wait, you know, this so is something. Can you elaborate with us? What what made that turn? You you were interested in becoming a dentist, but what what sparked the change? I mean, that that's a very distinct path. Very distinct. Can you just elaborate a little bit? Because you're, you're you're so professional and so kind. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you're not the first one who said that. <laughs> that was like my academic advice. I'm like, happy you. Like you okay? I don't know. This is great. I I, I want to know what, what, what happened if you don't mind. Yeah, I think because um, I was, I, I'm right now majoring in communications and I was a, ma I was a nutrition and food science major at the beginning. Um, one was the commute um, because our satellite campus doesn't offer all the classes. So that was just like, ugh, you know, that was tiring. But, you know, there's a sacrifice to everything as well. Um, but I think it was 
let's see, my sophomore year. Well, first got me back to going back to church, like really getting engaged yeah. uh, was my freshman year when I went to LA Congress. Um, and then after that, I was like, whoa. Um, even my mom would always tell me, she's like, hey, you're gonna be in the choir. I said, never, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> I have a guitar now, so I'm just like, okay. Um, so you have that. And my mom's laughing right now. <laughs> um, so we had that. And then my second year, I was the vice president of the club. And at the same time, I had to go to the San Bernardino campus. There's a founders in the San Bernardino campus. And when I went over there, there's a new club as well. Um, but that has a campus minister. And I saw, I was like, whoa, like this, they're like, there's much more offered, of course. Um, and I just saw something like, you know, I could see something like this here oh, at the Pondesbury campus. Um, you know, I'm really involved on campus as well. So I try my best to kind of like say to everyone like, hey, you know, my name is David. If you ever need a friend, you ever need someone to talk to, I'm here as well. So it's just being like almost, I guess you're ministering to the students. Um, but yeah, I think ever since I saw that, I was really struck. And I said, you know, I think I, I found my calling where if students are coming to me because they see like this, you know, warms that they can come to and, you know, also to at the same time, I'm able to, it's not like every conversation we talk about, you know, Jesus or God, but it's just, you know, by the action that I have of them witnessing my Catholic life, I think that is something that is really drawing them. Um, and so I say, yeah, let's do it. I, I said, I remember my, again, when my academic advisor told me, she's like, are you okay? I'm like, no, I want to change. I'm like, so what's the, what's a better degree for me right now? I was like, communications, I'm like, sure. Oh, even better. So yeah, that's what happened. It's total 180, really total 180. That, that, that is, so, so you already have a taste of that transformative experience. You have a taste of, of how uh, you can be moved within. And, and, and from what I'm hearing from you is that Paying attention to that is making you more present to the other. So the students, I mean, they, they may not be able to articulate that, but they feel your commitment through your presence, through that transformative moment. You know what it's like to be in between majors, to discern that process. Why am I going in this path? This path makes more money. Trust me, dentists make more money. <laughs> Being a professor or a campus minister, or a high school teacher doesn't make as much, but why am I so drawn to it? So you had to go through that as, as, as a younger person. And, you know, so that's, that's quite a bit. And then, so now you, ha you have this glow and you're present for the students and you know what? They feel it and they see it, and so I, I'm so grateful that uh, that you are still continuing with that calling into your professional career, which is your MA. And I mean, it, it's just LMU is just obviously a home for you. Uh, we have uh, so many amazing campus ministers. We have I mean, I'm sure you know these folks: John Flaherty, who does the music for the Religious Ed Congress, um, and Chris De Silva. Chris is Silva, <laughs> and he's in, both of those folks are alums from our program, and they are amazing, they compose music, they teach, uh, you could obviously join the choir, um, you can, <laughs> I mean, it's just, this is basically a good transition from where you are to, I, I already feel like you're here, you know, on campus, it's just, uh, it's just, right, Shane, see, Shane's smiling, because he knows, he's been at LMU a long time, like me, so, <laughs> It's just, you, you, you definitely have the fit for, for the program because um, uh, through campus ministry, through um, whatever area you wanna focus on in our program, it's going to just build your skills. It's gonna give you more of a language for theology. Um, you know, the kids are, today the kids are, they want to know why, how, where. They want the science of everything, <laughs> even things that you basically just feel. They want the science of it. So you're gonna you're gonna have the language, and and you're gonna have the methodology to share with them, so they can understand why you think this way, why we teach this way, and so that's just going to add to um, what you already have discovered within yourself in spirituality and in your path. And I and I'm just. So glad that you are mentoring these young people, and um, this is this is great, Christopher. We got a great group. 
<laughs> I think they're wonderful. I apologize that I haven't got my camera on today. I had a, a little bit of eye surgery yesterday, so I don't want to scare you all off with my my funny uh, face. So I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find an eye patch and a beard, so uh, I thought I'd just uh, leave my name on. So I, but yes, I'm excited. You all have such wonderful stories and um, so individual and unique. But um, as Jennifer said, we. I think you'd all fit in so well into the program. You bring such um, different things to us, you know. I love the diversity and everyone's individual take on things. And, you know, one of the greatest things about our program, in my personal view, is the community and the people that we have here. And, um, you know, I, as Jennifer said, I got my master's in education at LMU. Um, and I found the community was the strongest. You know, we live in, we live in the faith. We live in the community. We live in looking after people. You know, we have that Jesuit Marymount ethos, and um, that's a, another reason a lot of people come here. But we also take that community, and we look at it, and then we take that out into or back into our communities, so we can make that difference and really use our experiences of what we get from our programs to go out and make that difference. No matter if you're in Anaheim, LA, you know, even going back, you know, to San Francisco or the East Coast is, you're gonna make a difference. And um, that's one of the greatest joys, I think, of being at LMU and studying at LMU. And, you know, you know, when we don't have COVID, it's always a great joy to be on campus because our doors are always open. Um, people pop into the GA's office, they pop into Jennifer's office, my office, and, you know, just have a quick chat and everything. It's, it's great. It's like a big family. And um, as Jennifer will tell you, we're, I think we're the largest um, graduate program with so many students, but we are just like a, a big family. Nobody gets lost off or anything. So, and one of the reasons we have such a big family is because we have a wonderful mother hen who is Jennifer. And she, she looks after us very, very well and cares for every single one of you. And, and as she said, she listens to you and really directs you in what you need and where you're needing to go. And I'm sure Shane will, you know, um, talk more about that and his experiences. So again, thank you for joining us today. It is always a pleasure meeting new people and learning your experiences. So thank you for letting us uh, be part of your life today. Oh, thank you, Christopher. Thank you so much. And we, I don't want to brag about our students, but I can give you those uh, stats uh, as well. But first, first, last but not least, I want Shane to please uh, share a little bit about his experience in the program and, um, and, and how it relates to what he wants to do once he receives his degree. Please, Shane. Thank you. Okay. It's nice to meet you all. And yeah, my name is Shane, and um, I'm currently in my second year of the program, um, and also working as a graduate assistant. Um, and so, yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite a journey. I I'll just share a little of how I got here. Um, I think maybe David will especially be able to relate, but I think everyone else as well. Um, but I, I actually did my undergrad degree um, at LMU as well. And I started as a electrical engineering major. <laughs> so yeah, if you had asked me, you know, even like two, three years ago, if I thought I'd be here um, doing a master's in theology, you know, I probably would have said, no, like that's crazy, like no way. Um, but yeah, it was um, in my junior year. Um, I don't know. I just really felt like engineering, you know, wasn't really what I wanted to do. You know, like, you know, it would have, you know, like it wouldn't have been something I wanted to do, you know, the rest of my life. And, and at the time I had been doing a theology minor um, and so those few theology classes that I did take were the ones that I really felt drawn to. I felt like I really was enjoying and wanted to learn more, you know. Um, whereas, you know, in the engineering classes, I would usually 
like be falling asleep. <laughs> so yeah. And then it was in my junior year. Um, I don't know. I was talking with one of my professors and um, we were just talking like my plans for the future and what I wanted to do when I graduate. And, you know, at the time I really had no idea um, what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, so he, you know, he, he suggested to me, oh, you might want to seriously consider um, doing a master's in theology. And, you know, he told me, yeah, we have a great program here and uh, you have to meet Jennifer. Um, so yeah, he, uh, he introduced me to Jennifer and, you know, things kind of went from there. Um, but yeah, I think after, um, so I spent my last two years um, in undergrad as a theology major. Um, so I switched and um, yeah, that was really, uh, I don't know, a great decision. And, um, and yeah, after that, I really felt like I wanted to do more, you know, like I felt like I hadn't quite finished, you know, learning what I, everything that there was. Um, so yeah, I started the program um, right after graduating from undergrad. And um, so yeah, I think for me, it, it's, yeah, it's really just opened up a whole new world for me. And um, like Jennifer shared earlier, um, I think there's a couple of things that really stand out. Um, one of them is the professors you'll get to work with here. Um, and I think one thing I really like about LMU that made me know that I wanted to, you know, continue on to do my master's here is that the professors really will make time for you and they really, you know, are willing to meet with you and discuss your interests and, you know, any struggles or challenges you're having. Um, I think that's really one of the, the highlights has been and just getting to know the professors both, you know, in class or in their office or, you know, now we're on Zoom um, temporarily. But even, even then, like, they're always willing to meet with you. Um, I've even gone to meet with professors who, like, I wasn't necessarily taking a class with at the time, but they'll still be willing to meet with you um, if you have interest to discuss. Um, and yeah, it's really like, as you're in class with them, you'll just, there's been, you know, a few classes over the years that have really just kind of blown my mind, you know, where I'm just like, you know, every week I sit there and I'm like, wow, like, why have I never heard that before, you know, or wow, I never would have thought about this um, in that way. So the professors really, um, yeah, they'll challenge you to kind of, you know, think outside the box and, and go, you know, beyond, you know, maybe where you've always been or the way you've always thought things were. And second, I also do want to highlight, um, yeah, like the community of students that um, you'll be joining, which is also something that's really stood out to me. Um, and I think especially in the grad program, um, like you'll definitely get close to your classmates and um and one of the cool things for me has been um just getting to meet all these different kinds of people um because like jennifer said there's people who are here for all different kinds of reasons you know in all different walks of life you know there's some who are like teachers or they work full-time in ministry um you'll get to meet um, international students. Um, we have some priests and, and nuns who come from like Vietnam and India and Africa. Um, there's, you'll leave, there's even um, one of my classmates is a, he's literally a rocket scientist. Uh -oh. So he, uh, he always has an interesting uh, perspective because of that. And, um, and there's others like, you know, who are more like me who are just kind of starting out and don't quite know yet um, what we're going to do after this. Um, but yeah, so you'll get to meet all different kinds of um, people, a lot of, you know, older people with a lot of experience and knowledge and as well. So there's a great I think mix of, of just students that you'll get to work with. And, um, and yeah, it really is a community. Um, 
I think one of the great things about LMU and doing a theology degree is that, you know, it's not like maybe some other programs and degrees, you know, where everyone's there just, you know, they're just there for themselves to, you know, enhance their career and make more money and, and you know, get a promotion at work. But I think one of the great things here is that, you know, we all help each other out, you know, like, even in your classes, you know, like you'll always have classmates as well that, you know, are willing to talk with you or help you if you have questions. Um, so yeah, that's one of the, I think one of the great things here is that, you know, it's not just like, you know, everyone's out for yourself, you know, it's not like a competition, but it really is like, you get the sense that you're learning together, um, both with your classmates and with professors. Um, so yeah, I'd say those are, I don't know, those have been some of the big highlights for me. Um, and I think like Jennifer said too, you definitely, you, you won't leave the same way you came in. Um, like I'm, you know, in my second year, um, but even just after the first year, like I've, I feel like I've become interested in all these new things, you know, that I never even would have thought of, of, you know, wanting to look into or wanting to do um, just because even after the first year I was like wow there's there's so much more out there that you know I never knew about before um, so yeah it'll really I don't know I think it opens up your mind in in just these new and and creative ways Excellent, excellent, Shane. And Shane, I, you know, I'm going to put you on the spot. I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So thorough, so clear. Oh, excellent. Can you mention one aha moment where you were in the program and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, maybe in class or something you read or something that you put together? Um, can you just like, just, just one if you could? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Um... One I'll share, which was a highlight from earlier this year, um, before everything kind of shut down. Um, I was taking a class on the Old Testament, um, taught by a great uh, professor we have here. Um, his name's Daniel. Um, he likes to just be called Daniel. Um, and uh, he's, he's just such an engaging speaker and storyteller and um, so I was in this class about the Old Testament and just the way he teaches it is so different from any way that I've heard the Bible talked about before. Um, so just every week um, as he was teaching us these stories and, and you know, there were stories I've heard before and I'm sure you guys have as well, you know, about, you know, in Genesis and Adam and Eve or the Exodus or, you know, about King David or you know, the exile, like these are all, you know, familiar stories, but the way he, he would talk about them was just so different and it made me see them in such a new way. So like every, every night after class, like I would drive home and the whole drive home, I would just be thinking about, you know, what we had talked about in class. And I'd be like, wow, like, that's so crazy. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just like week after week and as we'd read and he'd lecture on, you know, the prophets or all these different stories that I thought I had understood before, I realized that I really <laughs> had no idea about them. Um, so that was really, there were like every week in there was just a, this aha moment of like, wow, this is, you know, like, if you if you take that class you I can promise that you'll never be able to read the Bible the same way again um, and it just it just opens up so much more and um, so yeah that was something that was definitely um, a <laughs> highlight so far thank you Shane and um, Shane is is speaking of Dr. Daniel Smith Christopher, who is our Old Testament professor, and David, he also presents at um, the Religious Ed Congress regularly. 
um, for, for those of you who attend that. It also, um, um, Shane just reminded me that Dr. Daniels Christopher takes our graduate students to New Zealand in the summers. Uh, of course, this is a choice, but you can uh, take an excursion, um, one to two week immersion experience living with the Māori people, really it's the Māori, but, they, but we call them the Māori people. And uh, we learn about the Māori tradition in Christianity in light of the Old Testament. And you actually live there with the tribal members. They are Christian, they're, they're um, Anglican, which is Episcopalian slash Anglican. And uh, Daniel Smith Christopher has been doing this at LMU for at least 30 years. And then for the last, I would say eight years, he's been doing it with our graduate students. And this is another profound transformative uh, experience to go on. And of course our program will help fund you should you decide to do that. Dr. Daniel Smith Christopher also takes our graduate students to Memphis, Tennessee to study the Bible and the blues. So the music genre, the blues, along with the Bible, focusing on lamentations and um, as Shane mentioned, the exile. And you would stay in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, go to blues concerts and, and just um, uh, basically unpack the lamentation themes within the blues music, musical lyrics, and also visit some museums. And so this is another type of immersion, even though everything is, of course, American, everything we're familiar with, but it is an immersion experience of being somewhere else in Tennessee, very different, and learning about the struggles of the African-American experience, while enjoying the blues at, at gigs at night and, and eating barbecue, and uh, going deeper into the Old Testament. Also, uh, another summer excursion course possibility is Dr. Daniel Smith Christopher takes our students along the Southwest where uh, he takes them through um, Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, so you would study learning about the Native American traditions, for example, the Hopi tribe and how they integrate Native American spirituality and Catholicism because you know that merge did happen. <laughs> And so, and so uh, he uh, has presenters at every post, at every stop, who speak about the Native American experience in Christianity, the way it was historically and then today. And so, of course, you stop at the Grand Canyon and, and other areas. So it's, 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 it's wonderful to, if you want to, you know, get out of Los Angeles and, you know, go with your class with a professor and focus on these little areas because it's only a week course or two weeks, depending on the excursion. And uh, basically you just write your paper for the rest of the semester. So it's a good way to complete one course of units um, within a short period of time. But of course, unfolding your experience through reflection for the rest of the semester. So it, it really is a gift. And then it's my understanding that hopefully we will, um, once things are up and, are up and running with our uh, in the in the world, we will uh, have an exchange with Shamanad. So Shamanad is a university located in Hawaii. And so our students will go to Shamanad in the summer and study Pacific Rim peoples and and theology in Hawaii. So it's a beautiful spot. And then those students will come to us and then we'll host them in Los Angeles. Uh, and they would study a, a course or two in LA, you would study there in Hawaii, and then exchange would flip back again for the fall. So that's in the works. Uh, I don't know, Shane is um, Daniels with Christopher's research assistant, so he knows more than I do. But so, uh, so this is, uh, these are also opportunities in the program. Now you can say, hey, you know, I have a family, I can't go anywhere, I, I have a kid, I can't go anywhere. So if, if you're like, if, 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 if you're like, I have a family, Jen, what are you saying? Okay, it's okay, you don't have to do it. It's just, if you want to take an excursion or if your mother-in-law can come and help out for a week or two, it's a good, good break. Um, but, I, but I understand uh, if you can't, because I can't go anywhere, um, that you can also take other courses that are on campus or via Zoom, however, or hybrid depending on the course in the summer as well. So courses, you would take two courses in fall, two courses in spring, and one course 
in the summer. Now, some folks who are um, extremely busy during fall and spring in ministry or teaching, uh, we also have people in the program who are attorneys, pharmacists, oh my goodness, um, physicians, uh, help, help. Uh, of course, DREs, uh, parish ministers, um, but uh, if, if you're really busy one semester, you can double up in the summer, but it's just a little more intense unless you do one of these excursion courses. So um, it, it, it is possible, it is possible. So not everyone, I just want you to know that everyone in the program is a campus minister or a teacher. They come from diverse uh, fields, but they're either involved at their parish or in ministry, or they do some side teaching in theology, or they're taking it for spiritual enrichment. So you have some that this is their career. Some people are going into their second career like Teresa and, 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 and Kayla, and, uh, and then others are, are continuing their, maintaining their same career, but also picking this up as well. And then some switch and, or they integrate both in, in their work or in, you know, in their life or on the weekends. Or, so, I mean, we've had students who, started their own nonprofit, okay, after <laughs> receiving the, our, our degree. I mean, so it's, it's just fabulous. And of course, um, we have many alumni, we have an alumni association and uh, they always are uh, advising us and uh, I'm so grateful for them. So it's, uh, it, it, it is very much like a family because those who are in these positions They've been through the program. They're now in these positions. They're looking for someone at their work. They will email me the job posting and I'll send it out on what's called a grad chat. And so everyone will receive job postings in theology, campus ministry, parishes. So there's youth minister positions, coordinate, uh, parish coordinator positions, teaching positions, of course, that's all the time. Um, so we are so well connected and well networked through the Jesuit network, but also through our alumni. So you have two things going for you. So you will never like leave the program and say, I have no job, where am I going, what am I doing? That, that doesn't exist. So <laughs> no one who graduates from our program is lost as to where they're going. For example, you're mentored by a faculty member when you're in the program. So when you're in the program, you're accepted, we uh, set you up with a faculty member that fits closely with the interest that you express in your personal statement. So I read that statement, obviously. And then I've matched the faculty member uh, with you so, so that you can discuss your life story, the courses that you're interested in taking and what you wanna focus on in the program. And he or she will listen to your story and help guide you along with your course selection. And this happens throughout your entire program. But for example, you, you write, oh my gosh, Scott, I just want scripture, scripture, scripture. And I want to work with Diana with Christopher, or I'm just throwing him out there. But then you're in the program and you're like, Jennifer, I, I took a bioethics class. It blew me away. Oh my gosh. Then I will easily move you to Dr. Roberto Doro and you will take you know, more of his courses and he would be your mentor. So the mentors, uh, they can change uh, based on your interests. Wherever you want to go in the program, uh, I have someone who can help guide you. Of course, I'm your, your general advisor, but I'm speaking academically and for your path after the program. If you want to go for PhD, um, you would definitely need to be close to a faculty member, okay? I'm um, just trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anything about the program. If you are admitted into the program, you would receive a theology grant, which will cover 50% of your tuition costs throughout your entire time in the program. If you also happen to have a ministry job at right, right now, maybe this fits with David, I'm not sure, but um, you would be uh, awarded an additional Catholic grant. You don't have to be involved in Catholic ministry per se, but you have to be involved in some ministry. Um, if you're in full-time ministry, you would receive an additional 25% um, uh, scholarship. So I, I didn't get that in the program because I wasn't in ministry. But what I'm saying for um, any of any, any folks who are in ministry, we have luckily another endowment uh, and the donor specifically wants it to cover uh, folks who are in ministry, some kind of ministry. So 
So financially, uh, uh, because uh, of the pandemic, um, because uh, some people are working, uh, many people aren't, uh, we were able to raise the grant a bit because we've made cuts otherwhere, uh, other places in our budget. So, uh, so that we can have the scholarships to keep our students in the program, keep them focused and to retain them. So, um, so this is what we have for you. And um, I, 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 I just sense, um, I, I sense that this time is a, is a challenging time for everyone and, and everyone's trying to make sense of it. And every day, while well, you're making sense of it, something new comes <laughs> into the fold and you're still trying to make sense of it. So being in a graduate program where you're gonna be nourished with community, theological material, reflection, is, is going to be a grace during this time, this time where you're limited in, in most other ways. Um, and then it's also when, when the life, life becomes normal, if it does, you're gonna bring this experience of being at least partially in the program during this COVID time and bridging it into what it is like after, it's, it's gonna be a very unique experience for you. And so, um, so this is what, uh, this is an interesting time in history and, and a good time to be in school. Okay. It goes because it's kind of a transition time right now. It's a transition time. Whether you begin in spring or whether you begin in fall, it's still a transition time in our world and our in our country. And it's a good time for building uh, a, a new way in life and um, and it, it imagining and figuring out along the way through mentorship in our program, through your own spiritual development and process on what that will look like in, in your next phase of your life. Because Teresa says, okay, she's on it. She's like, hey, I'm a mom. I'm going into something else. I'm done with corporate. But all of us really are in the same boat. We all are in this reflective time where, hmm, we're looking at everything. We're looking at everything, right? We're looking at our lives, our relationships, our, um, our trajectory. It's like, well, what, 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 you know, how is God involved in this? You know, what, where do I see myself? And so uh, we, we all are, are, are the same boat um, here. So this is a very good time, um, a very strong time to uh, begin your study. But that said, uh, if you have any questions, please, please ask me right now, uh, uh, me or Shane or Christopher. Christopher has got one eye, but okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I messed with that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so bad. And this, okay, go, go ahead, please. Anyone has any questions? Oh, well, I wanted to commend Shane because uh, listening to your story, I, I commend you for having enough conviction to change positions of where you want to go in life. Because I was, I was where you were a couple of years ago. But then with um, cultural expectations, you know, you have to finish your degree, you have to start making money, you have to get a corporate job. So I didn't have that luxury and that, that, um, that reflection to just like do whatever I want to do and not try to make other people happy. So I, I really, um, gosh, I wish I, I wish I did what you did and I saved all that time where, where you are now. So I just wanted to, I really resonated with your story. Oh, beautiful. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I think, you know, even though maybe you didn't get the opportunity to switch as well, um, it's cool to see you kind of exploring that now, you know, and I think one of the, a great line that one of my teachers always um, said to me was that we had to go through what we went through in order to be where we are now. So I think, you know, even though it may not have turned out to be what you wanted it, I think, you know, you know, what you've, what you've done previously will definitely help you, you know, in the program and, and even moving forward. Um, so yeah, but yeah, thank you for sharing that. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting for me to, yeah, just to see that, you know, you're interested in, in taking that step to, you know, being willing to, to change because, you know, I guess for me as kind of maybe a younger person, um, I see a lot of older, 
you know, people who, you know, nothing against them, but, you know, I see they, <laughs> they go to their same job, you know, every day that they don't really like, but, you know, they kind of got stuck and, and, and trapped in that. And um, so, yeah, it's cool to, to see you, um, yeah, here and, um, you know, thinking about what you really want to do. It's awesome. There are there are a lot of folks that are are, are coming to me saying, um, I, "I'm in pharmaceuticals, and I um, I just want to do something more meaningful." It was at our, our last uh, uh, open house, and he, actually, he just applied. He, he's just ready to he's just ready to jump. So, and he's. He's an older person, I, I, my age. <clears throat> um, so, <laughs> so, so you can uh, you can you can change no matter what uh, time in your life when God is calling you in, in your path. Um, uh, you know, changes can be made. And he has a family and everything. And he's gonna make this change. So it's uh, it's so inspiring to see God working in people's lives in, in such a profound way. And just moving them in the direction with ease, but moving them along. And uh, he would have never thought, that, oh, I'm going to, to at the age of 45 or 48, whatever, um, you know, join. Oh, I, I, I got muted. I don't know what happened. Did everyone hear what I said? We just lost the last few yeah. minutes. Last few seconds, Jennifer. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So, oh, uh, for, forgive me. I don't know what happened. But, um, so, so basically, people later in life do change careers, do change paths, and that is very normal in the field of theology and pastoral theology. Um, so, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. any other, any other questions or concerns? Um, the program you're also while you're thinking i'm going to blab um you're also uh, uh awarded uh, a student mentor so for example um shane for example would be your student mentor throughout your time in the program we have uh 82 students in the program so um it wouldn't just be shane <laughs> again someone who has similar interests um that you have i will partner you up um, as an unforced relationship here, yes, uh, as friends. So it's a person where you can call and say, hey, who's the best pastoral teacher to take for a what class or this class? Well, I can tell you according to your program, but I can't tell you personality-wise. But your student mentor, your friend can, can answer those kinds of questions. Or where do I go in the university to file this paper or or how has your time been? So it, it's, it's also someone who's gonna walk with you to accompany you throughout the program. And that person, you know, may graduate on, but by that point, you will have already made friends, you know, in your, in your classes, in your classmates. So, so I just wanted to make sure that you know that you have an academic faculty advisor. Of course you have me. And then you also have a student mentor in the program. And some people have two faculty advisors, d d depending on the complexity of, you know, their their integration of, you know, whatever subfield of theology that they're looking into. Sometimes they'll have two. And of course, uh, your student mentor, you're, you're in class with people, and then you're going to connect with, with those folks. So the cap in class, the largest class is 15 students per course. So this is very uh, seminar style. Um, uh, facilitation in education. So uh, you're not in a lecture hall with 200 people or something. Uh, it's just 15 students, that's the cap. And then, uh, but most of our program, our courses average um, approximately 10 students per class. So a uh, very small intimate learning style. Uh, so everyone gets to speak, um, everyone, you know, presents, uh, participates, connects with the faculty member, and so it, th that's why the community is so strong. So the program is large because we have 82 students, but the, because we have so many course offerings, um, there's only nine to 10 you know, students per course, but the cap is 15. Oh yes, please, Teresa. Earlier on, you mentioned about how the MA program is a stepping stone to see where you wanna go. And then you mentioned that some students decide to go to a PhD program. 
is it a PhD in theology or a PhD like in a different um, subject? Very good question. Uh, it, uh, most likely, it, usually it's a PhD in theology, pastoral theology, or bioethics. So for example, uh, if someone completes our program, uh, they will go to Loyola Chicago and they'll study ethics. So they'll study Bart, Kellick, uh, Bronner. Uh, oh my God, they're going to study. Uh, it's, so they're going to go much deeper into more of a subfield within ethics. So, so for example, um, instead of just general philosophical ethics, they will focus on Catholic social teaching ethics. So you see that's a little more specific. And then they're gonna go even deeper in the PhD program uh, studying a major religious thinker in ethics. So you see how it just gets narrower and narrower and then uh, they will receive their PhD. And, and others will um, uh, go directly into ministry. Now that's what I did, you know, I go directly into teaching and uh, they will build their career teaching or they will, they will work at a parish, it will be a DRE, a person who basically runs the ministries in the parish, or a pastoral associate. So after you get an MA in our program, you can contact the archdiocese. And even, you know, even though you're in orange, you can join this program where they will train you after your MA to become the administrator of a parish. So you basically, you hire the priest who comes in and, and preaches to your community. You're doing all the finances, you're, you're in contact with the deacons and DREs, whoever, you're, you're overseeing the entire, you're the administrator of the parish. And that's called a pastoral associate. And yes, women can, can be a pastoral associate. So that's something, uh, you have a corporate mind, a business mind, you can integrate that into your theology and then into your ministry if you want to uh, basically run a parish. So, uh, so folks who run the parishes aren't always priests. Okay, of course they 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 come and they preach at mass, and, but they're not necessarily running the parish. So that's an option, or or you can be a youth minister, campus minister, like like David. Um, uh, so many so, so many areas in theology. And of course, you can go into higher ed. That's what I did. Or you can teach in high school level. Um, so there, there are many options uh, for a theology degree. So the theology degree is wonderful because you can learn your academics. You can even integrate uh, education and philosophy. And yet you can come out of it with the promise of a job, <laughs> you know, work. And so, uh, so that's, so if you're a, a real heady academic type, you still will have the understanding of praxis and ministry and you can bring that into any field you're going to. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, excellent question. Jennifer, may I add just yes. something very quickly? Yes, um, please. Just for, um, I know when I went back to do my master's in education, I was, I had about 10 years between my undergraduate and graduate. So I was a bit nervous about entering back into the MA and worrying if my writing was good enough or if, you know, my research was, was going to be good enough. Um, but the nice thing I found with LMU is, and in theology, I, I won't talk about the School of Ed, but in theology, you actually have a librarian in our wonderful library that uh, specializes in helping the theology students. And so, you know, if you're looking to research something, that's that you'll go to and you tell them, you know, this is what I'm looking for. And they will really help you on that. They might even help you with some of you, not writing your, your essays and things, but really give you some directions and some really good help. Um, if we don't have it in the library, they actually have contacts and um, LMU and the library spends a lot of money to have these contacts with you know, other libraries in the US um, so that they can actually find the books and research for you. And they can actually have that photocopied and scanned to you so that you have that research. Um, and then on the other note is we do have a wonderful writing tutorial service 
um, for students and that, you know, you could make appointments with them and go over your writings with them and they really give you the help that you need as well. So um, that really kind of put me at ease because I was really worried about that. And also for me coming from England to America, I kind of look at myself as a, a English language learner sometimes because <laughs> Some of my spelling and writing is not the same as America. So, so I had to just okay. make sure. I remember I had, I did a wonderful piece of writing for the School of Education. And I think the only thing that came back was we don't spell color with a U or something like that. So I was like, well, if that's the only thing they can criticize me on, I think I've done quite well. <laughs> that's funny. It's your language. We, you know, we, we've yeah. just taken it and, you know. But, you know, I just I just wanted to reiterate that. And again, you know, with our GAs and with other students and, and just all that support, I really don't feel it was an issue for me. Um, and I've seen other students who, you know, worry about that, but they really do come through, especially over that time and with the faculty and the, so um, if you're worried about that, I, I, I'd really say don't, you don't need to. And um, I know we're kind of coming up to the ending, Jennifer, because we do have to give these good folks a few minutes before they go to the next session. Oh, yes, I think oh, it yes. begins at um, 12, so it gives them time to have a cup of tea or a snack or something, so. I'm so selfish, I, I want, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't care about that. No, I yeah. just do. So if you have any other questions, this is the time, but you can always email Jennifer at any time or any of us. Oh, deadline. Thank work. you. Thank you, Christopher. I just don't want to forget because I'm, I'm getting up there. But uh, deadlines. March 1st is a deadline if you want to apply for fall. March 1st is a priority deadline. If you want to apply for spring, if you can uh, submit your application in by the, oh, I would say, the week of the 23rd, the latest, if you're applying for spring. Spring starts in mid-January. Uh, so the week of November 23rd, um, if you're applying for spring, if you're applying for fall, if you can have everything in just so that I can secure your grants, you can get your advisement, you're not rushed, you can plan things. Um, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, that's all set for you. I just, I'm sorry, I forgot to, to give you the deadlines. And as Christopher so elegantly mentioned, you, you can email me. If you want to Zoom again, I'm available uh, to meet with you via Zoom or if you prefer via phone or if you just want to email me some questions, I, I am here for you. And again, financially in the program, um, if uh, most of our graduate students piecemeal it. So, for example, they take our scholarship, they're paying out of their pocket for some of it, and then some folks are living off of grants um, and, and this is what they're doing for, for two and a half to three years. And so they're taking out some FAFSA loans, some student loans. So basically their current undergrad student loan, if they have it, will roll over into their MA. And uh, during that time, they do not make payments. Uh, sorry about that. Um, uh, for their MA program. I mean, I mean for their undergraduate loans during their MA time in the program. Others uh, will uh, pay for their program by simply just paying full price, or they have a partner that helps pay, or a family member, a parent that helps pay. So, um, but if you're ever in the program and you're stuck or you need a little extra something, you just email us and we will do whatever we can to, to help you, you know, financially. Uh, so that because it, it benefits us that you retain, that you stay in the program. And of course, it keeps you doing your dream right now, which is learning theological studies. So I, I, I just want, I just don't want the financial bit to be a block in moving forward. That, that should be the least thing. Um, because again, we're a community and we have such a generous scholarship and we're here for you individually if you require assistance. So, and you can ask any current student and alum, <laughs> even Shane can attest to that. Please, Teresa, I'm sorry. Uh, is there a support group that I can find on Facebook or Instagram? Specifically, I'm looking to see if there's other uh, students in your cohort that are from Orange County, just so I can talk to them and see like, what's a good time of classes I should take for the commute, what freeways I should take if I'm coming from Orange County. 
Like, how do I find other students who are from Orange County? Oh my gosh, I have a long list. So what I will do is that I have, they're, they're so great. I, I will email you um, with those, uh, those alumni uh, that are on my board. They can tell you a little bit about their experience. They can tell you uh, what days to come to, to campus. Um, moving forward, um, I mean, during COVID, of course, everything is online. But moving forward, we are considering more of a hybrid program. So maybe you won't have to drive every week to class. Maybe it will be more like every other week. So that might cut down. And, and just for you and, uh, and David, I think Kayla lives close by. But for you and um, David, it would help with your commute. So um, we, we're, we're listening to our students saying, yeah, we, we we're fired up to come every week. But, you know, wherever they're coming from, we have students coming from Camarillo, we have students coming from San Bernardino, we have students coming from San Diego, and they're like, the commute, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so, so I thank you for bringing that up, because that's something we are working on more of a, a hybrid, so a little bit online, of course, a lot of in person, but we're trying to organize it better for you, um, for my, my friends in Orange and, and elsewhere who are commuting in. And, and I have a list. What I can do is I'll email you. A First, I'll, I'll email them to let, you know, let them know that you're going to be reaching out to them or vice versa. And then I will um, give you a list of folks uh, who could speak to you about their experience. And, and our classes, they begin at 4.10 and they end at... Um, I mean, I'm, forgive me, 420 and they end at seven. And then the next uh, set of classes begin at 710 and they end at uh, 945. So uh, some students who are commuting from far away will take two courses on one night. So for example, Tuesday is the LMU night that you would come. So you would leave um, Orange at 230, the latest. You would come to LMU, sit in the village, have a nice espresso. Yes, we have espresso. And you, <laughs> after your lovely drive, <laughs> you would sit in this gorgeous campus, your oasis, okay? LMU is your oasis. And you enjoy your espresso. And you would reflect a little bit or review your notes or your, or your readings before class. And then you would stay on campus that whole evening. So you're coming to campus only once a week and it's one evening a week. So it doesn't interfere with your work or your other things. So for example, um, um, as, as a mom, that might be ideal for you. Some folks think, uh, you know, my God, how can I handle, <laughs> you know, uh, you know uh, two classes in one night or they have a favorite class that's coming up that's on a different night. So they will come two nights a week, uh, Monday, and let's say a Monday and a Wednesday and they will drive up two times. But, but the courses themselves are once a week only. So it's not like you're driving up every day by no means. And you can arrange your schedule to come one night a week or you can come on two separate nights. So that's, um, yeah, so yes. But I mean, if you're leaving Orange at two to 2.15, you're gonna get to LMU in 45 minutes mm -hmm. because you're gonna come from you know, the South Bay to five and you're gonna swing through LAX, right? Cause we're right near LAX. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a real nice, easy swing off the 405. We do have a helipad as well, if you want to come on your helicopter. Um, uh, uh, we do, um, <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, I don't know if it's available for our students, but you know, if you are a billionaire, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, we wouldn't mind uh, charging you a small you know, temporary parking fee for <laughs> your helicopter. <laughs> yeah. No, we do have a helicopter. Every university does. But um, so for as, as managing my time because, oh, yes, please. Oh, oh, um, is there public, um, if, I, if I felt like taking public transportation? I'm sorry, for, I, 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 I got so uh -huh, public, public. Oh, public transportation. Uh, yes, interestingly enough, your timing is, is excellent because um, there is the metro that's, that runs from LAX in Orange to LAX. There's a train that runs from Anaheim to LAX. From LAX to LMU, there's a shuttle. 
Okay. So, so yeah. So once again, yes. Yeah, so you would, um, when I, when I email you uh, the list of orange folks, we call them orangeites. We love them. Um, they, they, they like the term. They, it's, it's, they love it. And so I write, dear orangeites, and I send an email to all of them. You know, they get excited. Or they're in Huntington. They know. They come over. So they know uh, the best way and the best time is a train, a metro system, even if you live locally. Um, yeah, we've beefed up those metro systems since uh, we've built the stadium, right, in Inglewood. Now becoming a little more traffic uh, savvy. So I'm hoping um, that that will continue. Any other questions? And if any of you want to meet other folks or, you know, just, just let me know um, because I'm biased. Um, so, so Jennifer, <laughs> because he is uh, an active student, but if you are um, interested in, in hearing other voices. Sorry, I apologize that Jennifer's internet, I think is just cracking up a bit. Um, I did put her email in the chat so that you have that there for her, jennifer.scott at lmu.edu. Um, again, please reach out to her with any questions that you have or anything that you've forgotten to ask. Um, and, um, you know, Shane also, um, if, you want, if you would like to speak to Shane, he can type in his email into the chat um, and he could um, give you some information as well. Um, if, if you prefer that. Um, so I think Jennifer might have lost connection. So I apologize for that. But as you know, with our new Zoom live, <laughs> it, uh, it causes um, some problems sometimes. But as I said, if you do think of any more questions, please feel free to email us. We have loved having you today. And um, we hope to hear from you again soon and welcome you into the program for um, you know, the fall. Um, I do see Jennifer there, but she's coming and going. So um, again, I thank you all. Um, there are more sessions beginning at 12 today. Um, so please do explore those. If you have the opportunity to look at the library, I would really recommend that. And, and student services, again, they would be wonderful. And also the um, GSLMU, which is the graduate students um, board that you know looks after you as well so again I thank you I don't know Jennifer if you can hear or not or we can speak to you but we're just saying goodbye and um, I gave them your email address to ask any questions so thank you everyone I'm going to close out and give you the opportunity to have a few minutes before we go to the next session have a great day yeah it's great to meet you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.